Hello everyone and welcome to this month's synth tutorial with computer music and this month we're going to be diving back into our Zebra CM plugin and creating a fantastic sequence using an LFO. So the first thing to do is load up an instance of your favourite door and then make sure you have an instance of the Zebra CM plugin loaded into it. If you've done these tutorials before you'll know that one of the first things we need to do is initialize the patch. So we go to the upper display on the Zebra CM plugin, we click and we move down to the bottom of the menu where it says init for initialize and we select that. So the first thing we're going to attend to today is the wave of oscillator 1 and for this particular sound we're going to use a hybrid between a square and a sawtooth. So moving over to the saw display which is currently located in oscillator 1 if you click and hold in the center of that display and drag the wave shape upwards so that we get this hybrid shape and it reads 1.60 on the upper display. We also need to decrease the volume of oscillator 1 because this is going to be the secondary oscillator in this patch. So moving to the oscillator pot, just decrease that level to around about 58. Now we're going to do some very similar things with oscillator 2. So moving to the oscillator 2 section, we also go to the waveform. But on this occasion we're going to use a slightly more digitized wave shape. So clicking on the central waveform display, drag upwards until you get a value of around about 7.40. This will give you a wave shape that looks like this. You can see it's quite digital. As oscillator 2 is going to be the primary sound that we're going to be hearing, we need to turn the volume up all the way to 100%, which in terms of the pot position is at the 12 o'clock mark. Now it's time to make some settings within the LFO2 section. So first of all, move over to LFO2, and if it doesn't read 2 already, make sure you have the number 2 highlighted in this section. This means that all the settings relate to LFO2. Next we need to change the waveform setting to a user setting. At the moment you'll see it's currently set to sign, but by moving to this drop down menu where it says LFO waveform, we can select user right at the bottom. Having selected user, you can now see that we have 16 points and these can all be dragged around to suit your own modulatory purposes. That's quite a lot of points to be dealing with at this time, so we're going to simplify things a little bit by going to where it says points, selecting that drop down and selecting a 4. Because of the way that the LFO synchronizes, it's currently set to 8th note synchronization, which means each one of these points and steps is actually an 8th note. That means we're currently looking at half a bar. Having selected LFO2, we now need to select its destination. Its destination today is going to be oscillator 2. So moving back to the oscillator 2 section, directly underneath the tune pot, there's a drop down menu and you can select LFO2 from that location. There still won't be any effect because we haven't set the modulation amount. This is set via this little turquoise circle that is just to the right of the tuning pot. If you click and hold on that, and we're going to drag the value up so that it reads 24. This is a measurement of semitones and 24 is two octaves. By selecting 24, it means we have plenty of scope and capacity for dealing with quite a range of pitch. At the moment we're going to be hearing something like this. And you can hear currently there's nothing happening, it's just a note. However, if we now move back to the LFO section and we start to alter these steps, you can hear that it starts to do something. We're going to set up a very basic sequence at this time and I'm going to give you some values that will give you something nice to work with. So first of all, step number one, we're going to leave where it is. That means it's going to be playing the note that you play. Step number two, we're going to set to a value of around about 30. Step number three, we're going to set to a value of 62.5. And finally, step number four, we're going to set to a value of 100. We should now hear something like this. So just to explain what we're hearing there, we're hearing oscillator one, which is just playing a normal note. And if I turn oscillator 1 down and I turn oscillator 2 up, you now hear this. Put the two together and we get this nice effect of having a drone against the moving sequence. Now having created this sequence, it now means that any time you play a note, the sequence will move with the notes. Okay. 
At this stage, you could very happily work with that sound. But we're going to take things a little bit further, and we're now going to look at the filter. We particularly like the filter, which is called LP Excite for this particular patch. And one of the things that we like doing with this is first of all turning the cutoff control down. <laughs> But also, an additional thing you could try is by setting LFO2 in the direction of the filter. This means that effectively the value of your cutoff is changing in line with the sequence. And you can hear that's getting brighter as the sequence moves upwards. You could also try putting a little bit of a splash of resonance on this give it a little bit of colour. There are some other things you could try as well. We would also suggest doing things such as moving back to the oscillator section and using the aliased waveforms. This means that by pressing the number 4, for example, in both oscillator sections, it means that you're thickening up the texture at the source. By using the detune facility, you can thicken up the sound altogether. <laughs> And you can hear that that sounds a little bit detuned now, but much thicker and quite nice as a consequence. One final thing you could try relates to using LFO2 again, but this time we're going to send it in the direction of our waveform. If you look at the wave pot in Oscillator 2, we can select LFO2 from this drop down and we can add a value here. This means that the wave shape itself is being modulated in much the same way as the filter is being modulated by the LFO2 step sequence. One last thing you could try is applying some effects, and certainly for this kind of sequence using some form of delay would be a really nice idea. So in Logic we're just going to use our stereo delay, and by using that we can immediately get a sound like this. <laughs> which gives a really nice thickening effect. So there we have it, one LFO redeployed to act as a sequencer on our ZebraCM plugin. See you next time.